the easy answer is it's simply not true. And I think what people are referring to when they say that is, I got the flu shot and then I had symptoms which reminded me of the same kind of symptoms I get when I've had the flu. And the problem is that they're assuming that temporality is causality. I'll give you an example. When I speak to large audiences, I'll say, this will be in August or September, nobody has gotten the flu shot yet. How many of you have had muscle aches, low-grade fever, headache, fatigue? And you know, 40, 50 percent of them said, but if you had just gotten the flu shot the day before that, what would you say? Well, I got it from the flu shot. When we say that people with egg allergies can't get a flu shot, we have to look at the advance of science over time. In the past, if somebody had what's called an anaphylactic allergic reaction to the flu shot, which is due to the egg component, they're right, they couldn't get it. That is no longer the case. A, flu vaccines contain, if any, low, 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 low levels detectable of egg protein. The second is we now have vaccines no longer produced in eggs. So even somebody who has the worst kind of egg allergy you can imagine can get a flu shot. We have to give them the right one. We wouldn't give them any one, but we'd give them one not made in chicken eggs. So everybody can get the flu shot. Interestingly enough, in the U.S., the peak of our influenza outbreaks are often the January, February, early March time frame. So it is, in fact, never too late. In fact, people will say, well, what about April, May, June? And I would still give it to them if they're traveling or they're in an area where there are a lot of travels. Because remember, the flu season in the southern hemisphere is the opposite of ours. So people are always bringing influenza to one or the other hemisphere and, of course, sharing it with each other.